Hi, this is Angela from Really Good Stuff. Thank you for joining me. It's Monday. I hope you guys had a terrific weekend. We had some great weather here, so I know we enjoyed it. It's not sunny right now, but at least we're in the 60s finally. So tonight we're going to talk about some foam alive, but I also just wanted to have a conversation with you guys. So I know you have been loving all the prizes we've been giving away, so we've decided to keep doing it. So again, to get in a drawing for a prize, all you have to do is answer the question that I'm going to ask. So the first thing I want to talk to you about is the end of this school year. So in the comments below, tell me what state you live in and what you plan on doing for the end of the year. You know, are you having a virtual graduation? I don't know if you've checked out our teacher resources um, on the website. There's a whole section of free resources and we have over 20 different different graduation certificates and signs. There's even one for the parents uh, because parents were teachers. Not that they aren't every day, but they've had to step it up a little more lately. So tell me, what are you planning on doing to celebrate the end of the school year? The next question I wanna ask you is, is your school district talking about anything for next year yet? I know my friend uh, teaching with Mr. Gammon, he's in Virginia, they've already started writing digital lesson plans for next year, just in case. Are any of your schools doing summer school? Like, we want to know, we want to know what's happening. We're up here in Connecticut, right outside of New York City, so we're going to be in a different boat than a lot of you, or maybe the same as some of you. So. That's my second thought or question. Let me know what state you live in and what the talks about next year or summer school are. I know some people are thinking, let's try summer school as like a dry run for how school's gonna be. I know that none of us know exactly what's gonna happen, which is probably where there's all kinds of different plans being put in place. So we would love to know that. So if you could answer those two questions for me, you will be in a drawing for fabulous prize again. So make them separate comments and we'll pick one from each question. We're gonna give away a lot more prizes as we go. You guys are loving them. We love giving you stuff that you can use in your classroom. So now we're gonna talk about Foam Alive. Now I did a video on Foam Alive with my daughter Elizabeth a few weeks ago, but we were pretty far away. So I didn't think you got to see a close up. So for right now, I'm just gonna talk about it and show you. And then I'm gonna have Elizabeth, who was with me, who's now filming, I'll have her get some close-ups for you. So last time we used the purple, but it also comes in green and blue. So I wanted to open a bag for you so you could see exactly how this works. So it'd help if I could open the bag, correct? Mm. Of course. Mm. <laughs> I didn't tear off enough. So there's a resealable bag sealed really well that it comes in so we're going to dump this in this container and you can see it's already good to go so one of the things I wanted to show you is it comes with a little guide with some stem connections some different things you can do with it but I thought seeing it up close would be helpful to you guys so here's the blue let's mix this up a little you can see we didn't have to do anything to it. It comes out of the bag ready to go. Look at how fun that is. Like I said, when Jeff from Steve Spangler Science brought this in the office, we just all played and played and played. So I have the three different buckets here. And now some of you are like, okay, this is fun, but what else can I do with it? What can I do in a classroom? So I'm gonna show you. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm at home. I didn't have stuff that I had normally in the office. I have these little beads, which you could use um, any plastic little animals or doodahs you have in your classroom. So I'm gonna bury them in here. And then what you can do is have the kids go for a treasure hunt and try to find, let's say three. So I found a starfish. Let's see what else I found. Ooh, a pineapple. Let me see. These are harder to find because they're so small. Ooh, and some flowers. So I could talk about, um, let's say, hmm, starfish, pineapple, flowers. 
So we're going to pretend we're going to make a fantasy story about a trip that we took to Hawaii, where when we got there, they gave us flowers to wear around our neck. For dinner, we had roasted pineapple. And then we went to the beach and found some starfish. So that's a fun activity you can do with this. You can put plastic letters in here. You can write on little uh, plastic tiles, sight words, and have the kids find their sight words. All kinds of fun. So let's do another activity. Again, just some random beads I had in my house, but they kind of look like little gemstones or whatever. So I'm going to throw them here in the purple and I'm going to mix them up. And isn't that fun? You can have the kids go for a treasure hunt. You can even create um, a list of questions. So depending on what color bead they find. So let's pretend here. Okay, silver. I'm going to pretend silver was tell one nice thing you did today. So I'm going to say I helped Mr. Jeffries um, in the hallway open a door. Whatever. So you can make up all kinds of things to do with these. They're fun. They're sensory. If you have kids that just need to fidget with stuff, these are awesome. Whoop. Got a little purple in there. We'll do something with that later. So now I'm going to bring my board over because I want to show you the true magic of this material. A seed flew in. I had to <laughs> pick it out. <laughs> so as you see, I just grabbed a little bit. I'm rolling it up. I'm going to roll it really tight and squeeze it. And now Elizabeth's going to do an up close picture for you. Watch what happens with this. Do you see how it's starting to fall apart? This is a polymer. Is that cool or what? This is a polymer just like the snow or the orbs. Now the fun thing about polymers is they come in many different forms. So we have this form that's already made for you. There are, there's the Insta Snow, which grows really quickly. And there's the orbs, which grow slower. And then we also have like polymer dinosaurs and animals that take a long time to grow. So again, this is fun. This is a challenge for your kids. The tighter you pack it, the longer it takes to fall apart. But it's just, it's just fun. And it's okay if a little bit gets on the floor. It's very easy to clean up. So here's question three. Answer below for a chance to win a bag of your own from life. with the foam alive in your classroom. One way you would use it. Would you use it for a treasure hunt, for a sensory table? I mean, look at this. It's just so much fun to play with. So that's question three. And you'll be in a drawing to win your own bag of foam alive. Let me put a little bit more away. And then what I want to do, we happen to get a little purple in the green. So let's go ahead and have fun with that. Let's see what happens when we mix this together. I think it's going to look cool. It's going to look tie-dye. Look at this. Is that fun or what? So the fourth question I have for you to win a bag of your own foam alive, it is what is your favorite color? Is it the green, the blue, or the purple? Let's see how cool this ball looks falling apart. Look at that close up. I see it starting. Here it goes. This is just so much fun. The thing I think that I love the most about this is that it doesn't dry out. This purple that we have here is the purple we used two or three weeks ago. And you just store it in a container or you can put it back in the bag. The bag has a seal for you. So that's a ton of fun. Make sure you're getting some science time in um, with your kids over your virtual teaching and uh, do some science with your kids outside. It's always fun to be learning outside. Let's see. Let's think of a fifth question, Elizabeth. Let's see. One of the things we know out of this is that kids are going to need some help with some social emotional stuff. Some of the kids have never experienced anything like this. Um, I heard something the other day that the kids that are alive right now birth through 12th grade. This is their September 11th. This is the most 
outrageous, crazy, weird, interesting, <laughs> however you want to say it, thing that's happened to them. So how do you plan on incorporating more social emotional learning into your classroom next year? So if you tell me what state you're in, I know Connecticut started mandating that teachers do social emotional learning. So what's going on in your state? How do you plan on helping your kids get back in the swing of things? So that's five prizes. That's pretty good, right? Mm -hmm. I could give away a sixth one too. Um, if you'd like to share this, that would be awesome. And whichever friend you share it with, they would have a chance to win all these prizes as well. I'll give you till Wednesday morning. And then Kate, our social media person, will select the winners. And for those of you that have won a prize, you know we really are sending out all these prizes. It's a ton of fun. We know you guys appreciate it. We appreciate you and everything you're going through. And for now, at least till the middle of June, we're going to be doing these Facebook Lives three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 7 p.m. So this is my only one I'm doing this week. You can come back on Wednesday and Friday at 7 p.m. to see Nicole. I know she has some great things planned for you. I appreciate you being here. And uh, I hope you liked the Foam Alive demonstration. <laughs> it's fun to see it up close, and it's a little different than you might have thought. I just love that you don't have to create it or make it. It's, you know, easy to clean up, fun to use, and anything for fun is good for me. All right, I'll let you go now. Thanks. Have a great Monday. See you next time.